In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. For today, May 22nd, it's a ferial day in the Universal Church, uh, but also uh, the Feast of St. Rita uh, uh, for t particular places. It's in that um, uh, special section in the back of the Missal. Uh, so I would like to speak about her life, uh, very, um, uh, very inspiring for her uh, perseverance in the face of great difficulty. So St. Rita was born in the year 1380 in Cascia, Italy. Uh, she's known as St. Rita of Cascia. Uh, she's a very pious young girl and often visited the Augustinian convent of her city and very much uh, wanted to become a nun herself. Uh, her parents, however, uh, following the custom of the time, had already arranged for her to be married, and so she was at the age of 12. Uh, she bore her husband two sons uh, rather quickly, but um, no more children after that. Now, her husband, although financially well-to-do, had a rather quick temper and was prone to violent outbursts, uh, which St. Rita suffered very patiently. Uh, he also, unfortunately, was involved, again, according to the custom of the time, in the rivaling political factions, uh, vendettas, and so on. Uh, um, rivaling families, uh, very, very common there in Italy. Uh, however, after about 15 years of marriage, St. Rita, through her good example and earnest prayers, softened his temper, and he left that way of life behind. Uh, so proof through, through persevering uh, prayer and efforts, and the softness of a woman's touch, we could say, that brutish husbands can be reformed, right? Not by nagging or, or other some such, uh, but by prayer, prayer and a good example. Um, unfortunately uh, for St. Rita, though she affected his uh, moral conversion, we could say, uh, the political factions in the city became more intense, and her husband was killed by rivaling members uh, for his previous involvement uh, in, in that, um, in, in that uh, conflict. However, uh, St. Rita continued in her heroic virtue, and at her husband's funeral, publicly forgave his murderers. Now, uh, while we might think this would, would be the end of her misfortunes, they continue uh, for although she had raised her two sons uh, well and had converted her husband, uh, her, um, I think their, their uncle, uh, their father's uh, brother, convinced them to leave her home and live with him in their family's um, ancestral home. And there they were fed uh, stories of, uh, we would say false stories, or, or stories of false valor and the, the glory of a life uh, of that political wrangling the swashbuckling, we could say, ad adventures of, the, of those vendettas. And their boys were, um, uh, we could say, uh, fostered in them. Uh, you need to take revenge for your father's death. You need to avenge the family and, and live up to the name and so on. And this was just such a cross for poor St. Rita. She saw how it ruined her husband's life and her life, and now it was ruining the life of her sons. And she'd worked so hard to raise them in the faith and so hard to get them to forgive their father's killers, and now all of her work was being undone. She earnestly tried to persuade them otherwise, but to no avail. Uh, she had recourse to God, however, and very much uh, with great faith, taking to heart that it is um, not uh, those who may harm the body that we are to fear, but those who may harm the soul. She prayed that her sons would either be converted or taken from this world. And within one year, her prayer was answered. Uh, both of her sons died of an illness uh, before they could uh, exact any revenge for their father's death. So St. Rita was now 36 years old. Uh, she was a widow and the mother of two dead sons. Uh, she had no uh, support, no family, and she was 24 years older than she had been when she wanted to join the Augustinians uh, for the first time as a little girl. Uh, well, she was finally free to do so, so she went to enter the convent to beg them to admit her, and she was refused. Uh, not only was she uh, rather old at the time for a vocation, nearly 40, but her husband's violent death and involvement in the political vendetta of the time was uh, something of a scandal to the convent. Among the nuns there were uh, family members of the rival uh, um, family that had, that had killed her husband, and although they were not involved at all, neither was she, it would have been a scandal. It would have raised tensions outside of the convent to have family members from both factions inside the convent at the same time. Uh, we can see these political... Uh, 
positions, these points of pride and honor were just ruining vocations everywhere. Everybody was getting ruined by these. Uh, so this, however, is uh, rather than be dejected. I mean, how many people would have looked at this as just like a ruined life? My husband's dead. My children are dead. My religious vocation is dead. Uh, just so heartbreaking. Uh, but St. Rita uh, uh, accomplished the impossible. Well, if these political factions are preventing me from entering the convent, I'm going to resolve the political factions. And she asked for the intercession of St. John the Baptist and St. Augustine and St. Nicholas of Tolentino. Uh, his feast day is September 10th, and he was an Augustinian monk uh, who died about 100 years previously and was famous in Italy for settling a political feud in Tolentino. So she thought, well, if he could do it with God's assistance, uh, then so can I. No matter how weak and small, it is God who will accomplish this uh, uh, miracle. And so her efforts were very successful and very quickly. Again, within one year, she had secured peace between families that had been warring for decades. She was then allowed to enter the convent and finally began to live life of an Augustinian nun that she'd wanted to since she was a little girl. Now, I mean, imagine that. Just think about that. I mean, that is unbelievable uh, that, that uh, these families uh, would set aside those feuds and their pride at the, at the um, insistence of this woman. But you can see that that is what heroic suffering does, is that people had known who she was. They'd killed her husband. She forgave them. Her sons died. Certainly they knew of her prayer to, to save her sons from being involved. They knew that her religious vocation was blocked by these factions, and she showed no anger, uh, no resentment, no bitterness, but only love and a desire for peace. Uh, undoubtedly, that, that left an incredible I impression on people at the natural level, not to mention the supernatural grace that such a heroic virtue was gaining uh, for their conversions of heart. So uh, what an example there, patron saint of the impossible, Saint Rita. And uh, so she entered the convent and for the next 25 years lived an exemplary life um, uh, of a nun. <clears throat> and you know, th this Saint Rita, who had prayed so much for the grace uh, to follow Christ uh, ever more closely, was uh, gifted with a tremendous um, sign of heavenly favor. And that is, as she was meditating before an image of Christ crucified, a small wound appeared in her forehead. And she had a, a vision of one of the thorns of our Lord's crown uh, 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 transplanting itself into her, her own forehead. Uh, this caused her constant pain and was always a wound that was fresh and bleeding. And, and for the next 15 years of her life, uh, she suffered in this manner. Uh, in the last four years of her life, she was confined to her bed, uh, subsisting entirely almost on the Eucharist. Uh, she died in 1457 at the age of 76 years. Uh, so what a life, what a life, a wife, mother, widow, consecrated religious, patron saint of impossible causes. Who knows God's plan for our life? Uh, you know, behind those disappointing series of circumstances, to be denied our childhood dreams, her childhood dream of becoming a nun, to be married to an abusive man against her will, uh, after heroic patience and prayers, converting her husband, only to have him murdered by the very people that he forgave. Uh, to have your only two sons poisoned by an evil uncle to desiring revenge and murder. Death is the only hope for their souls. Finally, to be able to attend the convent you wanted to 24 years earlier, only to be denied because of your connections with a rivaling faction due to a marriage you never wanted in the first place. Uh, just an unending series of misfortunes. Where is God in all this? How could good, a good God allow all this suffering? Why are my prayers and my tears for decades only met with more and more misfortune? St. Rita never gave in to that. She kept praying, and she kept hoping, and she kept living that good life, and, and she became a great saint. And after all this, not only that, uh, did her life turn around, she turned around those lives of, of those political factions, the, the warring vendettas. Uh, and that is what happens when we accept that, that patient suffering. And, and, and think about that. For years and years, it was darkness. It was just like God is not hearing my prayers, not hearing my prayers. Only when I'm praying for my two sons to die, oh, then he hears that prayer. Uh, but not to, to convert their hearts or souls. Uh, we can't think like that, right? That is a devil who wants to attempt us uh, to despair or to give up in prayer. Uh, but, but if we continue, we will, uh, again, not just turn around our own life. She converted her husband. She saved her two sons from a life of, of evil and, and, and hatred and revenge. Uh, she secured her place in a convent. She was gifted with, um, I don't know, you would call it a part of the stigmata, the wound of our Lord, a passion in her own flesh, that crown of thorns. Uh, to, and she lived 40 years of her life as a consecrated religious, 
uh, given over to be the spouse of Christ. I mean, what a grace. What grace is indeed. Uh, so I would like to encourage all uh, persons out there suffering from, it seems, repeated uh, denials by God, repeated sufferings in life, especially for those women who appear to be in bad marriages and it just doesn't seem to be getting any better. Remember St. Rita of Cassia. Uh, she is your patron saint. She can do the impossible. Uh, she converted all those souls around her. She had uh, the desire of her heart. Uh, the spouse of her soul, Christ, uh, uh, um, uh, came to her very intimately. Uh, this is uh, our hope. If not in this life, then in the next. We are all called to be uh, spouses of Christ. Uh, so let us pray to be saint like St. Rita, uh, not becoming embittered uh, by these events in our life or malformed by them, uh, but forgiving from the heart, bearing no grudges, and we will save our soul and convert others by our gentleness, kindness, meekness, and long-suffering patience. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.